Over 40 million Americans take statins to lower cholesterol that can form plaques in the arteries, which in turn can lead to heart disease and stroke. But what if there's a key piece missing from this equation? A bodily system, in fact, that can be leveraged to bring a more natural solution to heart disease. Dr. Gerald Lamole was among the surgeons to perform America's first heart transplants. This experience fueled his discovery of the vital role of the lymphatic system in human health. Working in connection with our nerves, veins, and arteries is our lymphatic system. What role does it play in preventing not just heart disease, but chronic disease in general? And how can we leverage it to optimize our health and longevity? Welcome to Vital Science, where we learn how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. Dr. Lamol is a professor of surgery at Temple University and Thomas Jefferson Medical College. Dr. Lamol, it's an honor to have you join us on Vital Science today. Well, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for inviting me. There's so much controversy that continues around the cholesterol, the lowering of cholesterol um, using drugs like statins in the interest of preventing heart disease, preventing stroke. And I know you have a unique perspective on this based on your, your research, based on your own experience. And you're particularly qualified to talk about this being one of the first doctors in America to perform open heart transplant surgery. We did the first five heart transplants and we really didn't know much about it. We converted an operating room into a intensive care room and we stayed with them 24 seven uh, and it was more just learning than it was uh, knowing what to do with um, with the patients as far as the immunology and things like that. So they did well for about a year or two and then all of them died from what they called galloping atherosclerosis. And what it meant is they we put in these young hearts in these patients with good blood vessels. And after a year or two, depending on the patients, they developed this, this atherosclerosis of the vessels that looked like 90-year-old vessels. And uh, it was a mystery why the heck this happened. Uh, after my tour in, in Houston, I came up to Philadelphia and be, uh, was chief of cardiac surgery at Temple University. And we worked on uh, cholesterol and uh, how the lymphatics uh, were clearing it on this was 1969. And uh, so I did some surgery on six rhesus monkeys and we ligated, we marked the lymphatics with dye and then ligated them. And within the short period of time, six to eight weeks, they developed early atherosclerosis. So, so, so basically, just if I understand, doctor, you kind of cut the or stopped the lymphatic flow in the monkeys. Yes, we identified the the lymphatics of the heart of the monkey and ligated them. We tied them off and then gave them a high cholesterol meal and we were able to see deposition of the fats into the uh, arterial wall. So that was uh, one the first step which showed us there was something with the lymphatic ligation that would promulgate the, the atherosclerosis and so I wondered, well, if we can do that, why wouldn't chronic narrowing and spasm of them and sclerosis of them cause chronic hardening of the arteries, atherosclerosis? So, uh, and the other observation, we noticed that there were these little white streaks in the coronary artery patients in the heart muscle themselves, there's little white streaks, but they weren't there in the patient with normal carters. So we biopsied those streaks, and sure enough, they were sclerotic or scarred up lymphatic vessels that were being blocked through chronic inflammation. And I understand the lymphatic system, it plays a role in clearing these substances in the body that can cause inflammation. What is the lymphatic system, and how does it work? Yeah. Well, the lymphatics, uh, you know, we don't learn much about the lymphatics in medical school or in training. That Nobody mentions the lymphatics, and yet they follow the course of the vessels and follow along the venous system, and there's actually more lymph than there is blood fluid in the body. And every time we have a circulatory excursion around our body, we lose about 10 or 15% of our clear fluid that's in the blood this fluid seeps in interstitial area of the body and it has to be cleared. It doesn't go back into the 
capillary or the vein, it goes into the lymphatics, as does large proteins and uh, fat uh, and and lymphatic cells, dendritic cells, and all the uh, auto um, the immune cells that uh, we have circulating in our body. So all this gets cleared back through the lymphatics back into the venous side. And uh, this uh, is, is little recognized and not thought of because the lymphatic vessels have their own um, intelligence, as it were. They can, they can have spasm. They have muscles in the wall of the vessel. They have peristalsis, so they can contract. They have nervous tissue. They have an autonomic nervous tissue. They can send messages to the brain, to the liver, all throughout the body. And these messages, they're not uh, neural. They have to go through the, the lymphatic system to get circulated to the liver, kidneys, brain, and uh, elsewhere. And in terms of cholesterol, they, they play a role in, in moving cholesterol away from the heart? Well, that's what we found. And it's interesting. See, you, you have to understand that the level of cholesterol, in my belief, is not related to the atheroma or the disease in the wall. What it's related to is the amount of cholesterol that stays in that tissue and it is not taken care of quickly because if it is, it becomes oxidized and that's when it becomes a uh, pro-inflammatory toxin. Now, if you get, it's like the fire eater in the, in the um, circus. You see this chap uh, take this flaming uh, blade and stick it down his throat and it, and to take it out and he's not he's not burning how that works is it don't let the flame stay in contact with the tissue for a long period of time it's the same thing with the oxidized uh, LDL that if it's uh, there for a long period of time you're going to get a inflammatory reaction and if it continues it's going to be a chronic inflammatory reaction so this is the reason why we pursued this, and the pharmaceutical companies came up with medication that re reduced the level of the LDL and cholesterol levels re real low, and thinking that, oh, well, if you give a small burden, you won't have the inflammatory reaction. But if the cholesterol stays in the tissue a long time, you're going to get an inflammatory reaction. Would you say the lymphatic system is, is the principal way that this oxidized, I guess, mainly LDL cholesterol is, is taken away from that area? Yeah, absolutely. The lymphatics clear that area and what, what we postulate and what's been looked at and probably it is the accurate thing is that we talk about good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. The good cholesterol is the HDL, but they're both good because LDL does wonderful things for our body. It makes hormones. It builds cell membranes. It does many, many things in our body. And um, it's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. And the uh, HDL is a very small, it's a much smaller molecule. And what that does is it imbibes, it takes in the cholesterol and carries it. Now, the standard thought is that it, the HDL carries it out through the capillary again, but that doesn't work that way. What we believe in, what's been shown by research in many institutions like uh, Mount Sinai and Washington University, uh, is that the HDL takes the cholesterol and carries it through the arterial wall, which 30 years ago would, you wouldn't think possible because of the internal elastic membrane, the wall of the, the artery blocking the HDL coming through, but it comes through to the outside of the wall and picked up by the lymphatics there and carried through the lymphatic system. If it's working, if it's got a good fluid flow, if it's not in spasm, all these things are affected by chronic inflammation. You got to have to keep the lymphatics healthy to obviate, to get as quickly as you can the cholesterol away from the tissue and keep those lymphatic channels open and well hydrated with fluid and not inflammatory messages and signals from the rest of the body so that these uh, substances get circulated and out into the um, venous system.